Insights, solutions, and networking all come together at RSA Conference. Join a global cybersecurity community at rsaconference.com forward slash ITSP MAG24. And hello, everybody. You're very welcome to an on location chats on the road to RSA Conference with Sean and Marco. Um, those of you watching will realize Marco's not here. He's like, <laughs> you know what? This is technical sand stuff. You go have fun. <laughs> and I said, yes, I'm going to go have some fun with my, my friends from Sands who uh, do a keynote at RSA conference every year. And I think this is the third or fourth chat we've had where we get to talk about your panel and the, the things that you get to talk about, if, even if we don't get to talk about them. Wait, what am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, first and foremost, though, it's just it's great to see you on. I'm really looking forward to uh, catching you all in person in San Francisco as well. So uh, it's good to have you all back on. Well, thank you, Sean. We're glad to be here. Very excited about upcoming RSA conference. And uh, it's always nice to do a little sneak preview with ITSP Magazine. Uh, love it. Love it. So we have uh, Heather, Johannes, and Ed joining from uh, from SANS. And I'm going to give them each a, a moment to kind of share who they are and what they're up to. And then we'll get into uh, into the keynote panel. So Heather, I'll start with you. Okay. Um, I am Heather Mahalik Barnhart. I am D for Curriculum Lead at SANS and Faculty Fellow Instructor, Course Author. So very, very busy in SANS. And I'm also a Senior Director of Community Engagement at Celebrate. So all day, every day, chasing mobile threats, dealing with different intelligence and figuring out all the scary things that are on all the devices all the time. So if you think about it, and I say this every year, we're so tied to these things. And the more and more we rely upon them, the bigger the threats become. So that's where I am living every day. Nice one. Nice one. It's good, good to have you on again. Johannes. Yeah, my name is Johannes Ulrich. Yeah, I'm the Dean of Research for the SANS uh, Technology Institute College and uh, also a course author and SANS uh, fellow. Um, one of the courses I'm co-authoring is Web Application Security. So not to give too much away, but there may be something related to that uh, in uh, my uh, panel contribution here. And uh, yeah, I would say, you know, everything is a web application in some way. So uh, that's what I have here. Okay. Yeah, and I've, I've, I've often looked at even some of the client apps are web apps. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they look mm -hmm. like clients. It's really yeah, like uh, really Heather's cool. mobile apps usually are yeah. <laughs> yeah. connecting to some kind of API. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. They all look the same now these days. Ed. Sure. So I'm Ed Scotus. I'm the president of the SANS Technology Institute College. Uh, I will be the moderator of the panel, and I guess I'm the uh, chief herder of the cats. Um, <laughs> you know, we've been doing this panel well, on, a, on the keynote stage for nine years or so, maybe it's 10, maybe it's eight, something like that. And then we've actually been doing the panel at RSA conference for maybe 17 or 18 years. Um, but then we just kind of, they gave us bigger and bigger stages to do it on. Um, in addition to uh, working at the SANS College, I am also a SANS fellow. Um, I help, um, you know, bring on board new instructors and, and coach them. Um, in addition to that, I, uh, I have a consulting firm I call CounterHack. Uh, we're 22 people that does primarily offensive stuff, penetration testing, and so forth. I also am on uh, the board of directors for the local bank, and uh, I'm on the board of a charity and another college, and uh, things are good. Just really loving this kind of work. Nice. And uh, people may not recognize you without... Uh... The hat. Without a head, without a headpiece. Oh <laughs> I, I did receive a gift just last weekend of this yeah. hat. Ooh. Oh we, wow! We Try that it. on. Look at that. How, how cool is that? Yeah. yeah, you should wear that on stage. I was thinking about it, yeah. but uh, yeah, it's brand new hat. A little, little fancy there, but Look it keeps the sun off. It keeps. That's, it's that's very cool. Josh Wright. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Normally, I do a fedora. He usually uses one of these uh, drivers caps. So. But it was, it was that, uh, Irish, English, Scottish, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, heard some something like that. Custom made, nice one, nice one. Well, fantastic. Well, it's good, good to have you all on. Um, as I mentioned, and I think where I want to start, uh, I'm sure most folks know, but uh, the whole point of 
the, the RSA coverage, RSA conference coverage is to open up the world of cybersecurity to those who may not already be familiar with it. So clearly my audience, CISOs and security leaders and practitioners know who SANS are, but folks outside of that group uh, attending RSA for conference for the first time may not know. So who, who wants to give us kind of an overview of that? Ed, go for it. Sure. So um, SANS Technology Institute is, cel or the SANS Institute is celebrating its 35th anniversary this year. So it's kind of a, a big deal. 35 years in information security or cybersecurity. Um, SANS uh, is a training institute that trains tens of thousands of people per year. Um, we also have many materials and resources that people rely on through the industry, um, like our great posters. Um, uh, we have various distributions for doing analysis of, of things, uh, such as digital forensics or reverse engineering malware. Um, you'll notice in Johannes's background, uh, SANS also uh, has the Internet Storm Center that Johannes runs, which is sort of like an early warning indicator for major events on the Internet, as well as a, a diary for things that are happening in the lives of incident handlers. Um, and SANS also has a college. Um, a lot of people don't realize that. Johannes and I are very heavily involved with the college. Uh, Heather is uh, as well. Um, but the SANS College, we have over 2,000 students now, roughly half at the graduate level roughly half at the undergraduate level. So we have master's degrees, bachelor's degrees, as well as certificates. But 2,000 students is, is really kind of an inflection point in the college, um, in the college life. It's growing fast, uh, over 25% per year. Um, and one of my favorite parts of my job is working with the SANS college students. So, I mean, SANS does a lot of things, but training institute, the college, the Internet Storm Center, and then all of those free resources, by the way, which people can access by going to sans.org slash free. Sans.org slash free. There's all kinds of great stuff there that people can take uh, advantage of. Lots of free tools, too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I love it. I'm trying to remember back, I think it was late 90s, we, we had a bunch of Sans posters hanging around the <laughs> This poster is great. It's all pretty much wallpaper. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you got you to gotta have them. good stuff. Yeah. All right, so 19, 18, 19 years of, of this panel, uh, you're in a spot on the keynote stage, which is really cool. And for those who haven't listened to the previous episodes, um, maybe give us an overview of what the, what the history of the panel is. What, why was it started? Why was it formed, I should say? And what's the objective? And has that shifted over the years? Johannes, you want to take that? You've been doing this forever with me. Yeah, and I think it uh, it's still sort of true to its origin. It uh, It's supposed to provide focus on what really the top threats are. It's also supposed to be forward-looking. So it's not necessarily just you know, telling you about, yes, you know, the same thing that everybody keeps telling you based on what happened last year, but really to project a little bit uh, ahead of the curve. And I have to say, if you sort of look back of, some of the topics that we have covered uh, in the last few years, some of them have become current today or a couple of years after we had it. Like, you know, I think it was two or three years. We had talked about some of the uses of AI in uh, some of malware analysis and such. So that's a you know, hot topic right now again. Uh, and uh, that's really what the focus, what the panel is supposed to provide. It's that momentum that energy for you to then go out and look for these new and upcoming things yourself and inform yourself about it. Yeah. You know what Katie said last year that I really liked? We call it like the, what do we call it? The deadliest threats, the five deadliest threats, what or know about. it's like the scariest threats. Yeah. But we also teach the best ways to mitigate yeah. those things. Yeah. So even though it sounds like it's almost a doomsday, it always ends in a positive manner on ways to like think differently and mitigate and protect yourself and protect your organizations. So we could always, it wouldn't be as eerie though, like learn how to protect yourself from the five threats, but we do. That's something we always end with. That's a key thing. We're not gonna throw a threat out there and tell everyone to run. We want people to face technology. So that's a huge part. That's, that's really well said. And it's all practical. It's like, okay, what, what can they do with this? And, you know, the structure of the panel, I think, is, is kind of interesting. It makes it pretty intense for the presenters, just the, the way that it's laid out. Heather, did you, did you want to kind of describe that? I think people find that interesting if they haven't heard Yeah, it it's, 
it's the strangest type of talk I've ever done in my life. It is the most pressure. And I would say the first minute is the most pressure. And then you're like, okay, all is calmed down. So we usually have, depending on how many people, six to eight minutes to state our threat. So we need to tell you what the threat is, why you should be concerned, why we care about it and how to mitigate it in that short period of time. And we're all competitive professionals. So we try to stay two to our time. It's like a who nailed it the most. But it's it's interesting because you're in front of all those people and you really have to deliver in a short, short period of time. Yeah. So it's 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 uh I moderate, then each of our four presenters presents for six minutes, and then it's all QA. And I remember the first time we were on the big stage, I mean, there's like eight thousand people in the room and another twenty thousand on the stream. This is what I heard from some of the other SANS people who weren't on stage. They said, Ed, you walked out there right to the front of the stage and you looked terrified. <laughs> well, it's dangerous, you, dangerous territory. Yeah, but then you looked up and you smiled and everything just clicked. And from that point forward, it was just Ed presenting. And that's kind of what it is. When you walk out there, it's like, holy crap, look at this. Mm -hmm. and, then when, and then you're like, oh, I got this. I can only see the first two rows anyway because the lights are so bright. It, it, totally. It, it, it's like that for all of us the first time when we're up there. And this year we're going to have uh, Terrence Williams, his first time up there, yeah. and he's going to be awesome. I can't wait. He's a, a SANS certified instructor, uh, teaches great cloud stuff, and um, he's also an engineer for, for a small organization called Amazon. Perhaps you've heard of them. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he's going to be awesome. I'm very excited about his presentation this year. We're also going to be joined by Steve Sims. This will yeah. be his second or third year? Second I think maybe third year. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Well, you, you were reading my mind then because I was going to ask you to introduce the other two cool cats. Yep. So Steve you, Sims. You're a cat herder. <laughs> I am the cat herder. He, uh, so Steve Sims is the curriculum lead for um, the offensive curriculum at SANS. Um, and then uh, Terrence is a great instructor on uh, cloud, specifically forensics in the cloud. Nice. So you, you kind of kick things into gear, six to eight minutes each. Um, you kind of gave the structure of of the segment, <laughs> Heather. Um, how do you reach that point? Uh, I, I presume it's a few days involved preparing, uh, thinking about this stuff. <laughs> days, <laughs> <laughs> months. I'll but it, it's hard yeah. too, don't you? I don't know if you guys feel this way, but every news thing that's coming out that is touching on my topic a little bit, I'm like, oh no, because you don't want it to become an everyday thing and everyone on the planet knows about it. And now you're talking about something old. Yeah. So that's a little bit of pressure. Although we never learn our lessons and what I talked about six years ago, I could do again. And so we, we didn't learn. So here we go again. Let's talk about it again. <laughs> that would be too depressing. But uh, <laughs> no, it, it starts like six months before the panel. And I think it ends as we walk up on the stage. Yeah. Uh, the, the last little polish, yeah. the last little, sentence that you may want to add or remove uh, from the presentation. It's by far the presentation I probably prepare and rehearse the most for uh, among all the presentations because it's so short. You know, there's this famous saying like, you know, if, if I would have had more time to prepare, it would have been a shorter presentation. Yeah. Uh, and that's so true for, for this presentation because of the impact it also has. Yeah. I mean, it's fun to do, though, I think. I mean, look, the six months preparation time, that's that's not super fun. But um, the whole process, especially when you get to the end, that is it's kind of fun. It's neat to have this opportunity to share with so many people um, what we're seeing at SANS. And it, I think another thing worth pointing out is while we, we have our four panelists, it is not merely their thoughts on what we should be talking about. I mean, that's a big part of it. I mean, Heather is dealing day in and day out with threats in the environment that, that she's seeing in her Celebrite work, seeing as a curriculum lead and fellow at SANS. Johannes running the Internet Storm Center, he sees a whole bunch of stuff. That's We get great input from Steve Sims and, and Terrence Williams and, and so forth. But also we're hearing from other SANS instructors, mm -hmm. other curricula within SANS. We're hearing from SANS leadership. We're hearing from our students. I mean, all that stuff gets folded in and we struggle and wrestle with topics for that full six months. I think here we are two weeks from the big event um, 
And I think we've got our topics down and we've got some initial drafts of, of all of the presentations. Still a little bit of iteration to be done on that. Um, but from here on in, this is when the process gets fun um, to bring it to a conclusion. And to me, the, you nailed it, Heather. The conclusion is now what? <laughs> Right? Yeah. How, how do we mitigate this? So describe to me what you present, because I mean, the, the what you do could be extremely broad, right? It could be down to a control at the edge. It could be a configuration at the, at the network layer. It could be put these protections in place. It could be you have to build your product differently. It could be run your pro program and your operations differently, staff your SOC differently. <laughs> I'm just naming a bunch of things. Is it any, all of that, or what, what, what do you kind of provide? It is, as, it's a little yeah. bit of all of the things, even things you can do as everyday people to be a little bit more secure. And something I think that's really interesting that we never intend to do, and Johannes, I don't know if you realize this, but we always end up doing it, is somehow our threats kind of like intertwine with one another, even though they're completely different. There's something when we are listening to each other live on the stage and I'll say, you know what, what Johannes just said actually applies. And then the mitigation and the steps to prevent also the same things apply. It's like whatever Johannes says and his recommendations could definitely apply to something I say or Terrence or Steve will say as well. So it's interesting how just general tech smarts and thinking things through sometimes can be the solution. Like most mitigations sort of have two different components as of the technical thing. You have to change this line of code. Uh, but then there is also the, I call it of the layer eight part, the management part. How do you, how do human actually does that? And how mm -hmm. do you convince them to do it? There, how do you present the threat and all the, some of the weaknesses without sort of you not know, calling someone's baby ugly and uh, not, and having them sort of automatically against whatever you're proposing to fix that problem. So uh, I think uh, that's sort of where the panel really lives off. And that's sort of what Heather describes. Never, some of us sort of look some of us more at the human side, some of us more at the technical yeah. side of the problem, but really both have to come together. Yeah, I mean, I, I love this panel so much. Just listening to Heather and Johannes talk now, it's like, I want to hear what they have to say. I know that they are fighting the battles. They're seeing this stuff. It's happening right now and kind of getting a glimpse of what happens next. So these are the people that that I turn to and I think we a lot of us turn to to say what's coming next. Where should my attention be? There's so many different things happening in this industry. You know, cloud, AI, the evolving attack surface and attack methodologies. It's like, what what do I need to worry about next and how can I be practical on that? And when Johannes and Heather and Steve and Terrence start talking, that's that's where the magic happens. And I'm a I'm a nerd for risk because you you don't just jump to mitigating, compensating controls, right? Mm -hmm. You have to understand how does this risk impact me now? And you're looking into the future, so how does it impact me yeah. in the future? And how do we fold that into all the other stuff that I have to worry about? Do you touch on any of that in terms of how organizations or individuals as well should look at this from a risk? perspective? I think sure. so. And I don't know if you guys want to chime in or not, but I think we try to make every risk we talk about and all the threats we talk about relatable in some way that people are like, oh yeah, that could happen in my organization or even kind of demonstrate how it happens, like how easy it can happen. And I think when people see it on the screen and actually play out as we're talking about it, it sometimes clicks a little bit in their head. I think you're right. Yeah. And and also the different levels at which these risks manifest themselves. Uh, the neat thing about this panel is it deals with some risks that are society wide, right? It also deals with some risks that are enterprise centric. And then it deals with some risks that are personal. So and, and you'll see as we go through the, the five different um, attack types, that there are some at each of those different levels and some span multiple levels with i mean we we get a lot done in a 45 minute talk remember it's it's six times four right so six minute talks and there's four of those so that's 24 minutes plus there's like two minutes up front where we have to introduce everybody so now we're 26 minutes and then uh 18 or so precious minutes 
of Q&A. Um, so I, I, I do hope people will check it out. It's going to be at um, 4.15 Pacific time on Wednesday, May 8th. And it'll last for 45 minutes. And we try to give you a lot of stuff in 45 minutes. Make sure you take notes. Yeah. Um, I think I think people will like it. Jam-packed. Who, who's in the room usually? Practitioner to executives? Yeah. Security, yeah. business? Everyone. Yeah. 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 And they will stream it uh, live. So if somebody's not yeah. there at, you know, Moscone Center in San Francisco, it will be live streamed in real time. Um, so, but but really it's, we try to write this for everybody. There is a technical bent to it. But as Heather mentioned, there's also sometimes a practical personal bent to it as well and an organizational. We're, we're trying to cover a lot of bases, but to do it well. You know, you can cover a lot of bases and not be very deep, but we're trying to cover a lot of things with a, a level of depth um, that that will make everybody learn something. Yeah, I love it. Well, you know, what we've reached. We've reached the point of this conversation where you get to share your secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go first? It depends what you mean by secret sauce. If the secret sauce is what are the five, we're not allowed to say what are the five. Oh, come on. What are the five? Yeah, five. I'll buy you a nice hat. But maybe we could talk about how we choose the five. And right. let, let me start. And then right. and then I invite Johannes and Heather to 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 talk about maybe right. even how more. Do you, how do you do five with four people? That's a, do you one person gets two. One person gets two. And uh you know, this year, uh, Johannes Ulrich will be doing some topics. Um, and uh, so that, that that's one thing right out of the gate. The the, the, the real secret sauce of, of this panel that's, you know, we're 18 years in and eight or nine years on the big stage. It's the the people behind the panel. It's, it's these panelists. It's Heather. It's Johannes. It's Steve. It's Terrence. You start out with really great people who have their finger on the pulse of the industry and say, what are you thinking about? What is worrying you? What are you dealing with? Day? That's the start. And then we pull them together on conference call after conference call every three or four weeks for six months. And what happens there? Johannes, Heather, you want to add the next level down? Yeah. And I think um, you know, the people behind the panel and then the people behind the people on the panel, <laughs> all of us are teaching all these classes. Like Ed mentioned, you know, 10,000 students. Now, none of us is is teaching 10,000 students, but we we teach a lot. And uh, teaching is always that two-way street. Uh, while you're talking to your students, you learn about their problems and you, you start seeing patterns. Uh, for me also, like you know, with Storm Center, seeing all the data we are collecting and uh, seeing the questions that come in about the data, what are people looking for? What are things? And I think that really sort of starts getting things into focus. And then of course, yeah, on conference calls, bouncing off ideas and uh, seeing Ed or Heather cringe or smile uh, to provide some feedback on whether or not that may be a topic that actually resonates. I would say this is the first year that I was like, I know exactly what I need to speak on. Every other year I'm like, oh no, I need three ideas and I'm trying to like <laughs> scramble and think of things that the panel will approve. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this year, I don't know, I shouldn't say I got lucky, but one was like glaring that people are struggling with. And I try to focus on what are people truly calling me for help? Like, I have this thing and I don't know what to do. How did this happen? What can we do now? Yeah. So that's where I try to channel. And yeah, that's, it was about, it's tough four, though. I think it was four months ago, Heather said, I want this topic. I think this is important. And, you know, we said really why, you know, how are you going to address it, this and that? It went up to SANS senior management, and they're asking a bunch of questions about it. So it, it really is this refining process. And, you know, Heather's going to make an amazing presentation about this topic. Whatever this topic is, we're not allowed to say. What is it? <laughs> nice try. It's, it's a great topic. <laughs> it's, it's an intense topic, I'll tell you that. But, I mean, you know, some of these things, well, we can't say the specific topics because we're not allowed to. But I mean, you will see things associated with yeah. the latest cloud attacks, the um, the stuff that the Internet Storm Center is writing up on a regular basis. You're gonna, I'll bet you see a little bit of AI sprinkled in here and there because it's it, but it's various other attacks to which attackers are, you know, marrying AI to it to make themselves even more lethal. Um, so you'll see things along those themes, but the specifics, well, you'll have to tune in. I mentioned it May 8th, 4.15 p.m. Pacific daylight time <laughs> so 
Yes, local time in San Francisco. Oh yeah. All right. So you're not going to tell me what the topics are, but you kind of um, kind of see the 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 forest, and and we'll show you five trees. That day. there you go. There you go. I'll, I'm going to put this as we wrap here. I'll put this question. One of you can answer. All of you can answer. Hopefully, at least one of you answer. Um, somebody enjoying the presentations and the Q&A that follows, how can they leverage what they hear from you to redefine cybersecurity? Oh, that's a good one. Maybe, so we do, and this is a little bit of a giveaway, but if they've watched previous ones, Ed, it's not too bad of a giveaway. But at the end, Alan used to ask us and Ed continued the tradition on what's a key thing that everyone should take away and something to learn and implement immediately. So I would say we immediately give those items right away. But even the people that approach you after, I know on LinkedIn and all social media and through email, people reach out all the time saying, thank you. I have now fixed this thing or even ask you for follow up keynotes or talks or recommendations. I know after my one last year, I ended up doing all kinds of tip sheets for parents and securing generations. And because I talked about fishing my son, but people were like, what about our parents? I was like, oh, I actually didn't think about my dad. It's actually a really good point. He's a really easy target. So I think follow-up questions and asking us for more is always a good idea. And I think any of us would definitely be open to it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Johannes, what do you have to add to that? That was great, Heather. Yeah, no, no I think it's you know, the, the focus kind of these are threats that you should worry about, that you should go out and learn about. There's always so much to learn in information security. And uh, you have to zoom in on the threats that matter. And I hope that at least some of the threats that we'll talk yeah. about will be threats that matter to you and you getting proactive and learning about these threats before they become a huge issue to you uh, will hopefully help you. Yeah. And, and you know, I'd mentioned earlier, people taking some notes on this. Um, in addition, we do a little write up that we share with the press um, so that they can do their write ups on the things, <laughs> hoping to minimize misinterpretation of what we say, because it's, you know, just it's natural, you know, people hear things and they interpret it different ways. But we, we do, uh, paragraph or two on each of the five topics that we share with the press and then they can use that however they want adapt it into their work so even if you don't take good notes you'll probably see some pretty good press write-ups and by good i mean they're accurate to what our intentions yeah. were we don't tell them what to write but we say hey here's here's the detailed topic and the areas of concern in it. and then they write their own materials from it but we provide that to them um and then you know as heather said the follow-up afterwards we welcome that that's fantastic. Well, I I love this group. Thank you. I love the other two cats, cool cats. <laughs> um, this keynote is fantastic. I appreciate you all joining me every year to kind of give a, a, a preview, even if you won't spill the tea. I, yes. I, uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> and you. just to kind of wrap what you all just described, and I appreciate you uh, responding to that question. So it's about engagement, continued conversation, the community where possible, um, taking action, right? Leveraging, leveraging what you hear and, and see and, and have conversations around and, and putting it to practice. And no surprise, um, with instructors and teachers, uh, continued learning, <laughs> right? Um, I think that's that's the most thing. Don't don't sit stagnant. Take take action and and engage with others like this. So, I want to thank you all for uh, joining me today. I look forward to seeing you in. San Francisco and uh, catching the keynote. As uh, as Ed said, May 8th, 4.15 p.m. local time there. And uh, hopefully everybody uh, fills the room, fills the stream with, with goodness. Thank you, Sean. Thank, thank you so thank much. Thank you for having us. We appreciate yeah. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And everybody watching, listening, thanks for joining us. Our chat's on the road to RSA conference. Uh, and please stay tuned. I think as many conversations we've produced thus far we have as many coming in the next two weeks so uh, lots of great conversations with keynotes amazing people like this and i appreciate you all for staying tuned and we'll see you all in san francisco insights solutions and networking all come together at rsa conference join a global cybersecurity community 
at rsaconference.com forward slash ITSP mag 24.